Hello fellow learner, today we're going to be talking about the last chance to read something that Douglas Adams has written. The man who gave us the answer to life, the universe and everything. The author of The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. We're going to be talking about The Salmon of Doubt, a collection of works of non-fiction and fiction collecting after his passing away from his multiple Macintosh computers. Before going on with the review, I want to share a few things with you to see where I'm coming from approaching this book. I mainly read non-fiction, and in fiction I mainly read fantasy. But I have read The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, his Dirk Gentry series, a few of Terry Pratchett's books, so all of these are examples of absurdist science fiction, a few others classic in science fiction, but it's not my strong point. Secondly, I haven't read the book in physical form. I've listened to it narrated by the wonderful voice of Stephen Fry. I highly recommend you give it a try. On with the review. As I said in the beginning, this is a collection of articles, essays, interviews, introduction to books, speeches he has given, and um, pieces of fiction writing, the most important of which also gives the name of the book. The Salmon of Doubt was projected to be the next entry in the Dirk Gently series, and we have here 10 or so chapters. It isn't highly edited or polished, but it gives you an idea of where the book was going. It covers a wide range of topics, from memories from childhood or, or climbing a mountain in a rhino suit, from his fanboying over Macintosh computers to his hate for dongly things, his passion and interest in evolution and science, atheism, which is something that he explains quite a bit in his book, and if you're triggered by this sort of approach, don't read the book. What ties this all together is his incredible and unique style. I would bet if you give me a piece of his writing without naming the author, I would recognize it 99.9%, .9%, even if I hadn't read the, that particular piece before. He has a cunning way of putting words one after the other. He uses and abuses the language. He finds connections between words and ideas you didn't thought were possible, making you at the same time laugh out loud and have a potential existential crisis in the background. There is a quote from the book that I feel that expresses the way you feel after reading some of his writing. He was constantly reminded of how startlingly different a place the world was when viewed from a point only three feet to the left. And that's how you feel. You feel that Douglas sees the world in a different way, in a very different way, only that he's three miles to the left from you, not three feet. But I do realize that Douglas Adams' sense of common ideas, his strongly expressed ideas sometimes, may not be everyone's perfect cup of English tea. That's why I feel like this book is a great place of entry for new Douglas Adams readers, because it gives you his sense of style, his prose, without needing to read a whole novel from him. But I do need to make the point that this isn't Douglas Adams at his very best. From what I've read until now, it's The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, undoubtedly. In his opinion, it's the last chance to read, which made me curious, and this book is on my TBR. Nonetheless, if you really don't enjoy his prose, I don't think even The Hitchhiker's Galaxy will be up your alley. That's why I'm gonna give you a few parts that stood out for me from the book, and I encourage you to give them a chance. First is the nose in which he makes fun of himself in an absolutely delicious way for a couple of pages about his big, huge nose, in which doctors have been lost to humanity. The radio script intro, it is 
the introduction to rule all of introductions. Riding the race, how you can get the magazine to sponsor your vacation trip by pitching the idea of a driving test between a underwater subbug and a giant manta ray. T, because he's English and he must explain the proper way to brew a cup of English tea. And the private life of Genghis Khan, to give you a taste of his fiction that isn't the chapters from the Salmon of Doubt. And I enjoy more this story because it shows it is Finnish versus the Salmon of Doubt, which shows it was an idea. A good idea, but an, an unfinished one nonetheless. There are many things that I've learned from this book, but the most important one, I think, is not to take yourself too serious while talking about serious stuff. You don't have to be rigid and use the proper words and be all stuffy to talk about serious things. You can make fun of yourself, of others, and still raise important questions, still bring forth meaningful ideas. And this ties into his approach to life that sips from the writings from this book. I really enjoy his childlike wonder to learning about anything, his passion for science, from evolution, his, his joy in finding how things are connected. And of course, I'll always have a smile on my face when I see a puddle, because it will remind me of humanity's hubris. Curious to see why? Give the book a chance and tell me what you've thought about it in the comments down below. Consider liking and subscribing, and until next time, keep learning.